Misleading title alert. Wee 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 yo. Welcome, the Immortal Lights, to another round of the book reviews. My name is Karen, and I do these reviews for those who want to transcend beyond their own mere mortality to understand, get more learning from the books that they're investigating. And today, well, it does have a slightly exaggerated title, and by slightly, I mean completely. It is Don't Tell Mum I Work on the Rigs. She Thinks I'm a Piano Player in a Whorehouse by Paul Carter. This book was published in 2005, and it's about 200 pages in length. It's a memoir of sorts in that Paul is involved with all of the stories. However, many of the other characters are what make the stories. And it's of his 35 years of life, starting from 1969 and going to 2004, just before the book was published. It's told in chronological order. And yes, as the name implies, it's mostly of his life on the oil rigs, the stories that are there, but also the numerous amount of travel that he does in between locations and occurrences that are noteworthy. To give a taste of his style, these are usually short stories. So they're two to five pages in length, introduction, middle, and bam, super quick. Now they are very anecdotal and told very rapidly. So it's sort of a succession, bam, 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 going from different years. So some of the chapters, for example, in the book, uh, Pack a Day Monkey, which is from 1994 to 1995, Saturation, 1995 to 1996, and a lot of the later years are told in just a year by year basis and sort of what happened in that year. Now, they're very funny, but they can also be quite cringe and a little bit disturbing as well in some cases. So you get quite a mix of these different. I suppose glimpses into his life. Now, what are these sort of things? Well, he used to work in Russia, Nigeria, uh, Australia, Singapore, all across the world. And there would be random things. There would be his monkey that he had. There would be bar fights that he got into. There was crazy shit that happened on the oil rigs and the dangerous work conditions. So you're getting a lot of varied stuff all packed into one book. Touching upon the author himself, Paul Carter, he just seems to be a dude who's lived a life. So he's done numerous, numerous things apart from these crazy wild stories that he had working on the oil rigs, such as uh, he used to be in advertising. He would be an artist as well. He has appeared in film and TV, speaking gigs, etc., etc. So he seems like a dude who has many varied interests and is not just content with doing one single thing. The main thing that popped up for me from this book was just the question of storytelling. Is it artistry or embellishing? So a question to really ask with a, this type of book is how much is true? And I would probably say about 90%. And this is where I would say, yes, he probably had those experiences, but there was a bit of embellishing going on. So for example, when he was in this bar fight, did the guy actually physically go through the wall completely into another room, breaking down the wall? Or was there you know, a door there or was it an opening of some sort? Uh, another one would be there was this sidearm chase with the cripple who was hanging on to the side of this moped type device that they had with the, the little mini car on the side. And they were saying they were going down the streets and the police were chasing him. Uh, they had to drop him off and then continued the chase and then... They managed to evade the police and then he was just sitting down having a cigarette outside. Immediately afterwards, he sees his friends getting chased by the police again. And all of these things, you're like, okay, this could have happened. This definitely could have happened. It's not beyond the the realm of, uh, of realism. But how much of this is exactly as how it happened? Did he you know, shorten an hour or two here just to make the story flow better? Did he add some superfluous details that actually made it way more interesting? Did the characters actually say what he said they said in the book? Now, probably not because he was recounting stories from well over 10 years in the past. So you just got to look at a book like this and just go, "Um, okay, how much of this is actually true? How much of this is the artistry and how much is this, you know, pure fiction? So this got me thinking, does a good story actually need embellishing? Is this an essential part of it? And this is where I would say the artistry comes in. So I believe that pretty much any story can be told in a boring way. So you can have the most outrageous, craziest incident that is just full of like wonder, magicment, you know, the unluckiest chance, the most improbable thing. 
And yet, if you have the wrong person telling it, it can be extremely boring. But the artistry, I guess, is where this is where it's not embellishment per se. It is just how you tell a story. So this could be the tone, it could be the timbre of your voice. It could be how quickly you do. It could be the suspense you draw out by leaving silences. It could be the imagery, your use of the English language or whatever language it is that you are using to tell a story, the actual physical limitations of the language. How are you able to tell a story in present tense or future tense or use the subjunctive or all these different things. So I would definitely say that, no, you don't need to embellish. You don't need to actually create fiction and insert it into your story. You can get by with the just pure artistry and this is the knowing of how to use the actual language to the specific details and and form a, a narrative that is compelling. Another question would then be, okay, if you're so good at the artistry, i.e. the construction of a story, then you don't need embellishments, nor do you need the actual experience itself. You could just create it from walking down the street and have an amazing story. And this is where I would say, no, nah, that's probably not true. You actually do need to have some raw experience behind it. And it can be easy to look at a book like this and think, man, I've lived such a boring life in comparison to Paul. He's done some wild stuff. There's been, you know, just monkeys, animals, uh, crazy people, bar fights. Like it's just page after page is, is something that it's like a highlight reel of a person's life. And that's the thing. It is a highlight reel. He has condensed, let's just say his 35 years, and then he'll take the uh, 20 years that he was roughly working in the oil industry and the rigs and traveling around. And then you could say, you know what? Yeah, if I had enough time to think about all of the wild stuff that's happened in my life in 20 years, yeah, I could probably could write some good stuff as well. Now, this is not also to take away from him in which that, yes, he probably has gone and really tried to find some of these things. He seems to have the type of character who is a person who needs constant stimulation every time he was back in Australia and working in the advertising industry, for example, he'd go, nah, I need to get back out there. I need to be on a moment's call. And so he would get a job lined up in Russia within a day and then he'd be flying them. So it seems that yes, you can have the artistry. I would put it this way. You need to have the raw experience first. So you need to actually have something that is fascinating worthy in of itself i.e if someone had a video camera and was just filming it it would be pretty amazing then there's the artistry so this is the act of you know telling and enhancing it through your select use of words through your intonation through things like that and then maybe you need to add those little bit of embellishments the actual spices the fiction onto it to just kick it to that next level and maybe you can take away different parts from here so maybe you don't need so much embellishment but you need to be really raw with your experiences life and then the artistry part or maybe you can have some boring experiences in life but you could be a wonderful storyteller and also very creative in your fiction and thinking up of things so i would say it's like a mix between these three elements uh, is what makes up a good story and the most essential part from this that i took out was for a good story you probably do need to do the raw experience uh, because that's the i would say easiest of the ones to to create uh the the actual act of storytelling i imagine that's many many years of writing of honing your craft and whatnot but if you travel around if you hang out with crazy people you can just have these stuffs and it's a bit more real and it's a bit more fun for yourself as well so that was my i guess takeaway from from reading this which was if you want to be a good storyteller, you do need to have those raw experiences to, to be able to show off. Okay, on to my personal observations and takeaways. And one thing you might be asking is, okay, why, why did you even question his story? Why would you even talk about embellishments? Why wouldn't you just assume this is all the truth? Which I normally try to do if someone says this is a true story, this has actually happened, this is a memoir. I generally take them at their word, but I revise that when I get other information that suggests maybe that's not true. And so the title of the book, Don't Tell Mom I Work on the Rigs, She Thinks I'm a Piano Player in a Whorehouse. None of that is a occurs in the book. His mom knew from the get-go that he was working in the oil rig. She always knew he was working there. There's not a single mention of a piano. Uh, there's a couple of mentions of whorehouses, but there's no mention of him working as a piano player in a whorehouse. So Yes, the book title is very provocative and you're like, oh God, what's the, the drama here? Like his, you know, I would have assumed the book would contain some element of that. 
but no, it's just a, a, a draw to bring you in. And so this is what gets me thinking, okay, he's lied about the, maybe lied is a strong word. It's he, he's created a fiction of the title of the book, the way to draw people in. Yes, there's probably going to be some fiction mixed with throughout his stories as well. And how much, who knows? Uh, but they're most, for the most part, believable. I could, I could see these sorts of things happening. But you do still have to have that little bit of a question in your mind. And to be honest, it left a little bit of a, a sour taste in the mouth that, uh, okay, he, he needed to create this, this title to, to draw people in. But, you know, it's, it's, it's a fiction. It's, it's not true. On the flip side, though, he does have some credibility. And this is from my own personal experience, working on some of the mining drill rigs that were out there and just seeing the type of dangerous work, the propensity, the ability for someone to lose their fingers or have bad accidents when you're moving these huge steel pipes. And, you know, I was on ones which are only drilling a couple of hundred meters down. He was working on ones which are going deep, deep into the the surface um, of the of the ocean floor of on, or on land as well. He was working on rigs that were deep in the Colombian jungle or in the middle of Siberia or whatnot, um, but also on places like offshore. So it was a, a mix of, of all these things. And my personal experience is one with the, the type of work that it actually is, the danger that conformed to sort of what he was suggesting in the book. And then also the people, you do get a lot of varied weird people in the mining industry and in these types of very manual jobs and I can totally see why you can have the crazy Kiwi, I think his name was Maurice in the book, and also these just wild characters who drink heavy, who party, who do amazing, ridiculous, insane criminal things um, just for the hell of it. And the last observation was that right in the middle of the book, he has about eight pages of pictures which show some different scenes of him and other people on the actual rigs themselves or in Nigeria or in the jungle and whatnot. So that adds some credibility as well and is just a nice little touch to be able to visualize as well and see the author, see the type of people that he was talking about. And you're like, oh, okay, I can kind of get that. I can see that in my head. So in summary, it's definitely fun and enjoyable, but it hasn't left a huge impression on me. I have heard a lot of wild stories before. And to be honest, I just don't think these ones are going to particularly stick. One thing the book will do though, is really want to make you travel, really want to make you go out there and have some fun experiences, both good and bad for yourself. Just because he seems like such a fascinating character and you're like, man, I sort of want to be like that. Overall, I'm going to give the book a 5 out of 10, mostly just for the reason that I don't think I'm really going to be comfortable repeating any of these stories because I just don't know which ones are are legit and which ones have a bit of fabrication and whatnot in it. So unfortunately, I can't really use the book in, in real life and real examples because I, I'm just uncomfortable going to that next level, particularly with the misleading title and whatnot. So overall, Paul Carter's Don't Tell Mum, I work on the rigs. She thinks I'm a piano player in a whorehouse, a five out of 10. And that is it for today, my memo lights. Thank you for joining me to this part of the video. What do you think of the book? Have you read it? Have you experienced any things like this yourself? Have you worked on oil rigs? Do you believe all of what is contained within? I would love to know all of these things. Please, please do leave a comment below. If you want to help out the video and this channel, like, subscribe, comment, bell, you know, all of those good things. Uh, and I will also just mention that if you don't need particularly the video element, you can go and see this podcast on any of your favorite podcast apps. But I would suggest going to newpodcastapps.com and finding one with value. You can send me a boostergram and I read those out at the end of the month. A lot of fun and uh, another way of supporting me and also and being part of the the channel itself so other than that i really do hope you're having a fantastic day wherever you are in the world Kyron out